Did you guys know NASA once owned a muscle car officially? That's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. So this muscle car wasn't actually just a toy for astronauts to play with. It was actually a research vehicle used at the high-speed flight station at Edwards Air Force Base in the 1960s as part of the Lifting Bodies program. Lifting bodies are a type of vehicle based around the blunt body idea pioneered by Alfred Eggers of the NACA Ames Research Center in the 1950s. In the early 1960s, the idea of flying without wings caught the attention and imagination of NASA engineer Dale Reed. Reed was so interested in this idea, he actually built a small-scale model of a lifting body and recorded a video with the help of his wife to show other engineers at NASA. Eventually, the idea picked up steam at the High Speed Flight Station, the site where the X-1 pioneered supersonic flight and the X-15 was then just starting to break all kinds of speed and altitude records. NASA eventually pursued a full-scale version of Reed's small-scale model, called the M2F1, M for manned and F for flight. The M2F1 was an early concept vehicle, consisting of an internal metal structure surrounded by a plywood body. The idea was to keep the weight and the cost of the vehicle really low. And it worked. The M2F1 was built largely in-house with a lot of volunteer labor in a curtained-off section of a hangar under a sign reading Wright's Bicycle Shop as a callback to the Wright brothers working in the back of their own bicycle shop. It was built over four months in 1962 and 1963 for about $30,000, plus an additional roughly $10,000 for an ejection seat. This is actually really cheap. At the time, somebody estimated that had they actually contracted the vehicle out, it would have cost upwards of $150,000. The M2F1 was unpowered, which meant that it needed an external power source to get off the ground, something like a tow vehicle. But what that vehicle was, was a question, because it had to meet very specific guidelines. The right tow vehicle would need to pull the M2F1 at a minimum of 100 miles per hour, a consistent 100 miles per hour, and would also have to handle the 400-pound pull forces needed to keep the 1,000-pound lifting body airborne. The lifting body team at Edwards ultimately figured that the only car up to the challenge was a Pontiac Bonville convertible, souped up with a giant engine. The car was special ordered from a factory to include the largest available engine, a four-barrel carburetor, and a four-speed stick shift. Then, engineers at the flight center added a tow rig and measuring equipment. Roll bars were added for safety and the seating arrangement was changed. The passenger seat was turned around backwards so it would be easier to watch the flight, and the rear bench was completely removed, replaced by another bucket seat facing sideways so a second observer could watch the flight as well. And of course, because it was an official NASA vehicle, it was fitted with government plates, the NASA logo on both sides, and racing stripes. The hood and trunk were spray painted high visibility yellow so it looked just like any other flight line vehicle, except that it was a convertible. Needless to say, the vehicle drew a lot of attention when it was driven off base, even if the driver was going at the posted speed limit. It just looked too weird to be a government vehicle. But the Pontiac convertible ultimately did its job, successfully towing the M2F1 across the lake bed fast enough to get it into the air a dozens of times between 1963 and 1966. So what do you guys think of this choice for a tow vehicle? Let me know in the comments below, and of course leave your questions and any topics that you would like to see covered in future episodes in the comment section as well. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for daily Vintage Space updates, and with new episodes every single Tuesday and Friday. Subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.